So welcome back to my workshop. Today we're going to look at nice PCB and fix a problem. Now I actually already fixed this problem, um, but then I realized it would have been great if I recorded that, and it was a fairly simple set fix. So I went back and just undid basically the problem. So let's take a look at it. So the first thing we're going to do is power it up. And where's my switch? Here it is. Got my power switch. I'm going to go ahead and. Turn on my oscilloscope. And basically got something like this. Uh, this may not be exactly what I got when I was looking at the board yesterday, but it's basically that. It was a static screen of of, of junk. But it wasn't it didn't seem to be random junk. It seemed to actually be junk that was it looked like it was maybe incomplete. Um or it was all right, maybe it was a random job. Anyway, um, from this picture, we can already tell a couple things. All right, so we actually have some type of picture here, which probably means at least the CPU clock is okay. Um, it may not be okay to the CPU, but if the video is drawing to the screen, it's actually getting timing signal. So at least some part of the CPU clock is okay. All right. So um, then what do we do? Well, the first thing we always do is check the power. So let's check the power. So I have my handy dandy multimeter here. I'm gonna set it on to AC voltage. And then I'm going to test the voltage at the board. Now I test it by testing um, on an IC the power right here. So I put red to the power line, power pin, and then the ground to here. Okay. Um, I can't do this with one hand, so I'm just going to tell you that's how I do it. And voltage was fine. Now you may wonder why test the power. Um, and the answer is that if you don't have good power, nothing will work. So it's always take five seconds to test the power. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is test the um, CPU clock. So I got my oscilloscope on here. I've uh, put the oscilloscope ground to the ground, which is the ground end of that capacitor there. And now I'm going to just go to pin six on the Z80, which is the Z80 CPU clock. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I m mentioned that I, I thought this was okay. Um, but I always like to double check. So I got it there. And my scope says, I don't know if you can read that, it says it's about 3 megahertz. It's clean. So uh, we know the clock is good. All right. So the next thing I always do, once I've tested the power and that I actually have a clock signal, um, is to test, well, I usually test the, the reset circuit. The reset circuit is pin 26 on the Z80. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Got it there. And we look at the O-scope, and it's actually high. That means the game is not resetting, um, which is interesting. That means that actually it's running the code, unless the reset circuit just broken, but it's actually running code. And in this case, you can actually look to see it actually is running code. The game is running, just the graphics are all messed up. Okay. So what do we do now? Um, after I verified the clock and um, the power, uh, I'm always going to test the memory. So we're going to pull the Z80 memory out. No, I'm sorry, not the Z80 memory, the Z80 chip out of there. And we're going to go use our Fluke and test the memory. Okay, so I've hooked up um, the Z80 pod to my Fluke, and I plugged it in the Z80 slot on the CPU board. Make sure, again, your pin one is in the correct position, otherwise you're gonna have troubles. This isn't gonna work very well for you. Okay, so let's go to the um, Fluke. Always turn the Fluke on first before you apply power to the game board. Okay. And now the first thing you wanna do is you wanna hit the setup button. And um, just hit more. 
And where it's a set active force line, yes, turn that to no. That's all you got to do. Um, that's your setup, if you will. And then I always do a bus test to make sure that the CPU um, bus is okay. The, the memory um, address bus is okay. Oops, I did turn the board on. So let's turn the board on. And try it again. And this is bus test okay. That usually shows up okay. It's very rare that I, I see a um, something right immediately after the CPU uh, be bad, but sometimes it does. Okay. Now we have to figure out the memory ranges for the this game board. And to do that, we're going to go to, um, we're going to look at um, the MAME information from um, the MAME project, as well as the schematics. So, how do we uh, get information from MAME about the ROM layout? Well, let's do this. Let's assume we have MAME installed. Pull up our command prompt, go into our MAME directory. You see I have it installed as C um, slash MAME0172. And let's type the following command. MAME64, because I'm running a 64-bit version of MAME, minus list XML, very important, and then the name of the game, eyes. Um, or the, ma the name's name of the game, um, which is usually something similar to what the name is called. Sometimes it's they cut off some letters. And then just put that to um, use this, it's called the redirection operator, eyes.txt. And that's going to push out a bunch of information about eyes. Then we can type the command. I don't remember what the command is. Oh, it's right. Right eyes.txt, which will pull up the information of eyes.txt. And this is uh, what's called XML, but it, you can read it. Um, I mean, m a lot of it won't make sense, but who cares? Um, if we scroll down, we'll eventually find something called um, source file pacman.cpp. It's important. So find here where it's a source file and find out the name of that pacman.cpp. Okay? Got it? Go ahead and close that down. Now, pull up your favorite web browser. I hope it's not Internet Explorer. Um, and go to www.mamedev.org slash drivers slash mame. Oops, have it wrong. Let's just go to mamedev.org. And then click it over here on this little um, red banner. And then we'll click on, oh yeah, it's source. Then mame then drivers, and then just go back up here and remember that name that I asked you to remember? In this case, it was pacman.cpp, hit that. And that will actually give you um, the driver, the CPU driver information for the game that runs, um, that's responsible in MAME um, for doing the emulation. And you can see here that somewhere along the line, it says eyes, here we go, that this game supports eyes. And what we want to do is find the memory um, mappings. You can also figure this out from the schematics, but MAME gives it to you, so why, why bother doing the work, right? Um, eventually, we'll find, where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere around here. I'm looking for RAM. I, I usually, I, I think I missed it by now. Let's keep going down. Let's try this again. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Um, so it says the memory map is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 through 3 FFFF ROM, that's the game code. Here, 4000 through 4300 and FF is video RAM. So we're that's one RAM range we want to measure test. Then another RAM range is 4400 through 47 FF. It's a color RAM. Okay. And then it has some reference about Van Car only, since we're not playing Van Van Car, which is actually kind of a neat game. I, I've after 30 years, I've, I've only played it. Um, I played it for the first time at my friend's house. He has one of those 60 and one boards. I'm like, this game is amazing. Um, Van Van Car, pretty cool. Anyway, um, 
um, since this is only re relevant to Van and Van Kerr, we're going to skip this. And then here it says 4CF, I'm sorry, 4C00 through 4FFF RAM. So we have three RAM ranges. We're going to want to note them, write them down, because we're going to refer to them later. These are the RAM ranges we want to test. Thank you, MAME. People do not give, people crap on MAME all the time, and I don't get it. I think it's ignorance. Um, the MAME project, sure, it's not perfect. What is? I mean, it, but it, what they do is amazing. It's, it's for a love of the arcades like collectors have, and I really pisses me off when people shit on, excuse my language, when they shit on MAME because um, they're doing good work, and without, honestly, without MAME, probably none of, none, very few of the collecting community would exist um, because I believe it is MAME that has provided so much resources as well as got the interest back um, to, to, in the late 90s to, for people to collect the, the actual games. I got started with a MAME cabinet. I'm like, ooh, I can play all the games on my computer. Then I'm like, I want an arcade game. So I want to hook a MAME computer up and put arcade controls. And then I got addicted to actually owning the actual games. Um, so thank you, MAME people. Thank you very much for keeping the 80s alive for me. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox again. So but here we go. They did the work for us. They gave us the RAM ranges. All right? So we don't even have to, we don't have to figure it out. Okay? But you can figure it out from the schematics, which we are going to look at later. So after determining the, the RAM addresses, we've determined that um, there are three main RAM ranges, and let's test them. So we're going to go ahead, again, we have the game powered up, boss test OK. We're going to go ahead and hit RAM short, and the first range was address 4000 to 43FF. Hit enter. And we notice we have an error. Error BTS2. Okay. What that means is the data bus line 2 is not acting correctly. Um, so what I often will do is hit more and see if that error, oops, sorry, hit no and see if that error repeats. And it certainly does. Okay. So pretty sure that we have a RAM error here. And it looks like it's in one line of the, um, the, one specific line of the RAM chip. Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, often I will actually troubleshoot. If I see it's just one line bad, I will actually troubleshoot uh, and make sure that there's nothing. I'll, I'll find where that line is on the, the game board and make sure there's no cuts or breaks in the or, or bridges in the traces. Okay. Um, Then the next thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm actually going to make sure that the other RAM ranges are okay. So we know that the first RAM range is bad. I want to also go ahead and make sure that the other RAM ranges are okay. Because if this shows up on the other RAM ranges, the same error, then it's probably not an error with the, the actual RAM chip that I'm looking at. Because it wouldn't affect both RAM ranges. So it would have to be something in common to those chips. So let's do a RAM short on 4400 to 4FFF, which is the next range. I'm sorry, it was, um, let's clear that. It's 4400, enter 4, darn it, 4400, enter to 47FF. That's the next RAM range. And I do a short just real quick when I'm testing the game board. When I'm done, I'll do a, a long, which takes a lot longer, but it's a much more um, aggressive test just to make sure there's no weirdnesses going on. So it looks okay. Now let's test that last RAM range, which was RAM short, 4C00 to 4FFF. It comes back okay. So um, I tested three RAM ranges. One RAM range gave a bad um, error. Um, and the other ones worked okay. So it looks like the, the, the data bus has got to be okay because if the data bus was messed up on the, uh, on the bus side of the CPU, we would have issues. We'd have issues in all the RAM ranges. Um, most likely the same with the address bus. 
So I, I believe it's probably an issue with the RAM. Okay, let's just real quick do another test on that, that RAM short in the first range again and see what error we got. Uh, BTS02, which means the address line 2 on this RAM chip is bad. Probably. I'm sorry, not address line, data bus line 2. Um, on this RAM chip, the data line 2, not data bus line 2, the data line 2 is probably bad. Um, and these are 24, I'm sorry, 21, 14 RAMs, which means for any address, there's actually two RAMs that make it up. So whatever 20, 21, 1, 4 RAM is responsible for the lower bits is the one that is a problem. So we'll look at the schematics to figure out which one that is. So here we have the eyes schematics and it, it's all zoomed out so you really can't see but um, I'm gonna tell you right here this if you look closely the um, the all the RAM chips on the board are actually in this area right here so let's zoom in on that and you can see here we have 4L, 4H, 4M, 4J, and 4N, and 4K. Okay, so we have six RAM chips, all 2114s. Here, this is um, showing you the this IO0, IO1, IO2, IO3. That means the input and output um, bits. And I mentioned there's only four of them, you see. Each um, 21114 RAM only controls four bits, or only um, for every address, it, it only deals with four bits. So for every address, there's two, two, two um, chips. And you can see, actually, um, over here, for every two chips, they're kind of linked together by this line, this CS, this chip select line. Okay, They're all in pairs. But um, if we look at the, this label over here and this label over here, we can see DVR0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are um, the, the data bus bits. Okay, so this means data bus 0, 1, 2, 3, bits 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, so we mentioned this a low 4 bits is the one that's bad. So that means it's one of these ones here, 4H, which is has the 4 low bits here, or 4J, which has a low 4 bits, or 4K, which is a low 4 bits. So we know it's one of these, 4H, 4J, or 4K. Now, which one is it? Well, we ha to do that, we have to actually... Um, and sometimes you'll you'll see this in, in the schematics of the game. Like Atari boards are great. Um, I'm sorry, Atari, Atari manuals are great, and they'll usually tell you what if, if you if you know. Oh, well, they usually have beep codes and diagnostics. But um, often you'll be able to find this information just directly on either the main config file or the main driver files or in the board schematics. But in this case, it doesn't tell us that hey, we we need to know the four low bits of address four zero 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 through four three ff. So um, we don't know what that's going to be, all right? So we have to figure it out, and we look at the schematics. And the key here is this cable, I'm sorry, not cable select, but chip select line, not CS, which is, means not chip select. Um, the, or you can think of it as chip select. The not means it's active or true when logic is at zero or ground potential. So when a when the, the CPU wants to write to this chip 4L, it will actually make sure, or the circuitry of the game board will make sure that um, this pin 8 goes to ground potential when, when the CPU wants to access um, 4L or 4H, because these guys are in a pair. 4H is a low bytes, 4L is a high bytes. So uh, to do that, to figure out which chip it, it is, um, we have to take the address that we're interested in, which is 4000, write it out as hex, convert it to binary. And then we can figure out the address decoding circuitry that turns it on and which chip is getting turned on um, at that address. So if you quickly Google hex to binary or watch our uh, other video that actually we haven't posted on the, the Patreon site, but we have it on our um, YouTube site and our uh, arcadecabinets.com website, um, you need to convert that number 4000 from hex to binary. And to convert a hex number to binary, you just take each hex digit and literally replace it with the binary equivalent. So um, you see all the different hex digits and all the binary equivalents. So we see 0x uh, 
4, 0, 0, 0. We just dropped the 0 and the x. That's just notation. We're going to take the 4, look up 4, and we're going to see 0, 1, 0, 0, and then uh, the 0, which is going to be all zeros, the 0, which can all be zeros, and another 0, which can all be zeros, and then write that out. So that's what it looks like. The 4 here corresponds to these four digits, and all the zeros just correspond to their groups of four. Um, and then we number this. It's very important. Um, these are the address lines. And these tell you, this is when, for example, when the CPU wants to access memory address 4000, it literally is going to put these numbers on the address bus. And there's 16 bits in the address bus starting at zero. So address bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you see, when it wants to access address 4000, it's going to put all the address bits to zero except address bit 14, which will be 1. That's going to be represented as binary or um, a plus 5 on the, on the bus, and everything else is going to be at ground potential. So let's remember, when looking at the schematics, this address means all bits are 0 except address 14. So now let's go back to the schematics knowing what we know. Now this chip right here is called a demultiplexer. And what it does is it takes inputs here and depending on the combination of inputs it's going to activate one of these lines. Um, demultiplexers are not bad, and you really should learn how to um, understand what demultiplexers and multiplexers do. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this um, this um, specific lesson, but I, maybe at some point I'll do a lesson on multiplexer and demultiplexers. But and this isn't very labeled very well, honestly. But basically, when address bus 11 um, gets fed over here to B, and address bus 10 gets fed over here to A, and what happens is if A and B are both zero this line here is going to be activated. If um, A is 1 and B is 0, this line here will be activated. And if both of these um, lines are activated, they're both 1, then this line here will be activated. And we know um, that address bus 0, I'm sorry, address bus 11 and 10 are going to be 0 when the CPU accesses 4 0, 0, 0. So that means these guys will be 0 and this line will be activated. Okay, Meaning this, these two are the, the, the RAM chips that are activated and we know it's the low bits so it's this one, 4H, which is what we're going to replace. So we've looked at the schematics and determined that the lower bit here, no, the lower four bits is c controlled by 4H, which is that chip right there. Let's go ahead and remove that and put a new one in. So we've got a nice new chip in there. There is it right there. Let's try that RAM test again. Looks good. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and replace the CPU, or remove the Fluke probe, and put the original CPU back. Now, I actually can tell the game to boot up from the Fluke, and it should work. In most cases, it will work. Um, but I don't want to spoil the surprise, whether it works or not. So, we'll go ahead and power the game off, and remove the Fluke. God. When powering off, Always power off the game board first before powering off the fluke. So we now replace the um, the bad RAM with the good RAM. Put a new CPU in. Actually, the original CPU. We just put it back. Let's turn it on and wish for good luck. That looks promising. Going to go ahead and put a coin in. The game is working. 